Hi, this is Scott Love. As a management consultant and trainer to the executive search and staffing industry, I've seen a whole lot of offices up close and personal over the years. There's one single ingredient that causes someone to be a big biller that they have that nobody else has. And you know what? It's a pretty simple concept. It's the concept of being resilient. More than the tactics of recruiting, more than knowing how to take a job order, if you can be resilient, you can outperform and outbill all of your competitors, especially right now when the economic situation is kind of questionable. How can you develop this concept? How can you become more resilient? It's your ability to bounce back. Think about what you do for a living. You're in the purest form of sales. You sell a product that can actually back out at the end of the deal. No other industry can say that. You've got all these different variables that you have absolutely no control over. And at the end of the deal, you can have absolutely nothing to show for the time that you spent putting that deal together. You've got to learn how to manage your emotions. I've seen too many recruiters get emotionally distraught because of the swings, the highs and the lows. You can experience every single human emotion in the course of a day, in the course of a morning in this industry. How can you become resilient? How can you bounce back when bad things happen at good recruiters? How can you get back up, dust yourself off, and get back on the phone and start making phone calls? There's five steps I want to share with you that if you take these and if you can integrate these into your life today, I guarantee you that you will not have things bother you as much. When your deals fall apart, when the counter offers take place, it's not going to take you out of the game. I think there's a time in every recruiter's life where they actually question, am I really in the right industry? And the reason why they're so frustrated is it's the emotional context of the business. If you know how to manage your emotions, and be steady Eddie. You don't get too excited. You don't get too low. You're kind of steady Eddie. The only time you get excited is after the guarantee period's over. You'll be a big billing recruiter and you'll have the emotional reserve to be able to pick yourself up and get back on the phone and do what it takes to win. Five concepts. The first one is this. It's the concept of perspective. You need to look at things with a long-term perspective. About six weeks ago, I was running, I was getting chest pains. I realized that as I was walking up hills, I was out of breath. I'm a non-smoker, I work out all the time, and I'm realizing, you know, what is this? I go see my doctor, she says, well, it could be indigestion, it could also be your heart. Let's get you to a cardiologist and let him decide if there's anything serious. I'm thinking, this is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. So I said, okay, I'll play your little game, I'll go see a cardiologist. I met with him, he told me, he said, based on what you've told me, I'd recommend that we bypass the stress test. We go straight to a heart cath. That's where they stick a tube up your artery into your heart to see if there's any blockage there. This was two Tuesdays ago. I went in for a heart cath. I was thinking that I was going to be out of there by 12 o'clock, back in the office, on the phone. They found that one of my arteries in my heart was completely blocked, 100%. The other one was blocked with 99% blockage almost 100% complete blockage. I didn't even know if I had history in my heart, of heart disease in my family, because everybody was, everybody was dead. You know, everybody died from heart disease. Turns out one grandfather had a heart attack at 53, the other one had one at 48. You can't run from your genes. So they put two stents in my heart, I'm good as new, I'm able to run and exercise, and I can have an adventurous, rigorous life once again. But what that gave me was a lot of perspective. The biggest thing I got out of that was knowing that, you know what, what really matters in life? It's not the deal, it's not the money that you make, it's your life, it's those people that are important to you. So that's the first step. When you have bad things happen to you, look at things from a different perspective. Secondly, it's what I call the contrast method. This is an actual tool that you can use. As soon as a bad thing happens to you, you can actually come to this and use this tool to be able to put yourself in a state of performance. You contrast your current situation compared with something bad. So anytime I have something bad that happens to me from now on, I'm going to compare it to that situation that I had in the hospital. I'm going to say, how bad is it really? You contrast how bad is your problem compared to everything else that you've ever had to go through that's really, really bad. The third thing you want to do is understand what failure really is. If you fail at something, I want you to tell yourself first, congratulations, I tried to shoot for a target, I missed, and I failed. But you know what? I learned something. Anytime you take a risk, you're going to have a chance of failure. If we were to do a survey on people that were on their deathbed, and we were going to ask them, are there any regrets that you have in your life? And we were going to ask them, what would you do differently? They would probably all say, I would have taken more risks. If you take a risk, you open yourself up to failure. You're vulnerable at that time. A lot of people are not where they want to be because they're afraid to take that risk. They're afraid to fail. So the concept is, how do you look at failure? Look at it as an educational tool. 
I've even come up with templates that people can use to do deal autopsies. You know, these are the 15 questions that you want to ask as soon as a deal falls apart so that you can make money off this. You can turn that counter offer or that fall off into an educational opportunity for your team. If you're interested in getting a copy of that, email me, scott at recruitingmastery.com, and I'll email you a copy of that. The fourth thing you want to do is develop a habit. Habits are learned over a period of time. As soon as you have something bad happens to you, you want to intentionally go to that place and ask yourself, how do I profit from this? As soon as something bad happens to you, you want to go to that place of saying, how can I make money off this? You want to, be able to develop a habit of resilience, to automatically go to that place. The fifth thing you want to do is understand the difference between expectation and attachment. You expect everything you touch to turn to gold. Everything you do, you expect to win. Every candidate you talk to, you expect them to give you a resume. If they don't, you don't attach your emotion to that. You intentionally choose not to let external circumstances control your emotions. If you do those five things, I guarantee you, the next time something bad happens to you, you'll be able to get back on the phone a lot quicker and make more phone calls. Thanks for watching. My name's Scott Love. Now get back on that phone.